right, week five now over in the Big Ten. Moving on to week six, this is our full review of the Big Ten from week five results. Looking ahead at the week six schedule, and now I'm going to throw in some Big Ten power rankings. I'm not going to go team by team, but I'm going to go in individual tiers. I think we're far enough along now. We can kind of separate some teams into some groups, but I don't think we're far enough along to really be able to differentiate between a lot of those teams within those groups. So we'll take a stab at it. Let me know what you think. But in terms of week five, obviously Rutgers getting Big Ten action off to a thrilling start for Scarlet Knight fans with that 21-18 win on Friday night. Had a rapid reaction that went into it that I wanted to cover. I'm going to have a kind of uh, second pod come out for Monday morning. Kind of bigger thoughts from what that victory means and also moving forward. But in terms, obviously, of the standings, Rutgers getting off to a 1-0 start in Big Ten play. And now uh, 4-0 overall for the first time through, since 2012. Doing so on national television, uh, standalone game Friday night. It was a huge statement. Raves pretty much everywhere. Obviously, uh, Washington outplayed them in certain aspects. But in terms of win or loss, Rutgers did enough to get the win. They took advantage of mistakes and were executing in crucial situations. So they got the W. And Rutgers now 1-0 in Big Ten play. Washington falls to 1-1 with the loss. They beat Northwestern the week before. Ohio State blew out Michigan State in East Lansing, 38-7. Jeremiah Smith had two touchdowns, and it really was never close. It was 24-7 at the half. Uh, Buckeyes taking care of business. Uh, now 4-0, 1-0 in the Big Ten. Michigan State, Jonathan Smith's first season falls to 3-2 and and 1-1 in the Big Ten. They beat Maryland on the road earlier this season. Oregon, UCLA, actually a Big Ten matchup. First time ever as Big Ten foes. Oregon, no problem in the Rose Bowl, 34 to 13, uh, jumping out to a big lead uh, in that game. It was uh, had four touchdowns uh, pretty quickly. Dylan Gabriel threw for three. And uh, UCLA, you know, now 0 2 in Big Ten play, 1 3 overall. Oregon, 4 0, 1 0 overall. Penn State, Illinois, kind of the game of the week. And, you know, there, I, I saw some Penn State fans get upset at Brett Belima. If they looked at his, watched his whole comment, he was very respectful of the program and uh, Joe Paterno and everything. They took some white out comment uh, disrespectfully, but they really didn't listen to the whole comment. But Illinois went in there uh, undefeated. Penn State, you know, it was 14 7 late fourth quarter. And then a uh, key error by Illinois, and Penn State wins it 21 uh, 7. Singleton, uh, Allen scored. Drew Aller was really good. Luke Altmaier, you know, for Illinois, had a key interception, pick six. So, uh, overall, uh, Penn State wins, as expected, 21-7, to uh, as uh, Illinois suffers their first loss this season. Now, one-on-one in Big Ten play. Still, that game in Piscataway, uh, the 11th game of the season for Rutgers. That's going to be a pivotal game. And Illinois, I think, you know, obviously their styles are very similar, both hard in those teams. Uh, and, you know, we'll see how both teams do until they meet. But that is a much more intriguing game on paper than it was going into the season, despite the loss. Uh, Illinois dropping to 4-1, 1-1 in Big Ten play. Penn State now 4-0, 1-0. Michigan surviving Minnesota was up pretty big in that game. They were up 21-3 at the half. Minnesota scored three fourth-quarter touchdowns, almost won it at the end, recovered the onside kick. Officials did not give it to Minnesota, not really sure what they were doing. Uh, but it really, and you know, and the, the Fox, uh, post game, you know, the broadcasters basically saying the refs made it up. So not a good look. Michigan certainly on shaky ground. They did beat USC at home the week before they're four and one, two and oh, in the big 10, but they definitely don't look anywhere near an elite team this year. Obviously quarterback play a big part of that. Uh, and then Minnesota now, oh, and two in the big 10, two and three overall, uh, you know, PJ Fleck, obviously, uh, people thought he was on the hot seat going into the season. Certainly not helping his case so far this year. Wisconsin dropping 2-2, two and 0-1 two, in the Big Ten, uh, losing in the Coliseum to USC. 38-21, big bounce back game for the Trojans. Now 1-1, one one, their first win in Big Ten play. Uh, you know, and, and Wisconsin is just not the same team uh, without Tyler Van Dyke at quarterback. Uh, Moss, the quarterback for USC, threw over 300 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that the Badgers are – for the taking when they come to Piscataway now in two weeks. So that is a huge game that you looked at before the season. It's probably 50, 50, 
Rutgers has never beaten Wisconsin before, and now it's looking like Rutgers should be favored in that game, regardless of what happens in Nebraska, which we'll get to in a minute. Indiana, huge statement win at home against Maryland. Maryland dropping 0-2 in Big Ten play, 3-2 overall. Kirk Signetti, first season, uh, now 5-0 and overall, 2-0 and in Big Ten play. Their quarterback, Rourke, had 359 yards passing, three touchdowns. Uh, you know, they just a dominant effort. Uh, he has brought a lot of guys from JMU that, you know, were undefeated the year before, and they've just hit the ground running at Indiana and really, you know, I think is the biggest Big Ten story right now in terms of a surprise. And their schedule, much like Rutgers, is not super daunting at all. Uh, it would have been interesting if Rutgers and Indiana were on the schedule for each other this year, but they are not. But Indiana's rolling right now at 5-0 and with a win at home against Maryland. They also beat UCLA. So playing two of the lesser teams in the conference so far, but still 2-0 in the conference. That's a big deal. And then Nebraska, this upcoming foe for Rutgers, getting back uh, on the winning streak after that home loss to Illinois. Now 4-1 and overall, 1-1 in Big Ten play. They won 28-10. to uh, You know, it was close. It was 7-3 heading into the fourth quarter. And then they overwhelmed the Boilermakers, who are now 0-1 in the conference, 1-3 overall. Three fourth quarter touchdowns. Dylan Riola, freshman, 244 yards, a touchdown pass. Uh, Barney Jr., the running back, had uh, 66 yards on just four carries and a touchdown. Banks, the receiver, had 82 yards and a touchdown. And overall, you know, pretty comfortable victory for the Huskers, who will now host Rutgers in week six. But overall, let's just look at uh, what I am kind of considering tiers right now in the Big Ten, and then we'll look at week six, what the schedule looks like. Uh, so, obviously, you got to put Ohio State, Oregon, and Penn State, I think, in that top tier. Uh, all remain undefeated. Uh, and, you know, none of them have been truly tested. Obviously, Oregon uh, almost lost to Boise State, but survived that. Uh, and all these three teams on paper, you would think right now, look like the best teams in the conference. Uh, so, we'll see how it goes. But I think they're unquestioned alone in their own tier right now. Then that tier two, I think you put uh, USC, Indiana. Michigan, Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, Rutgers. Pretty big tier, but I think a lot of those teams haven't really differentiated themselves. Some have a loss, some don't. Uh, some have high hopes. You know, obviously Michigan, USC, Iowa, Nebraska, big names there. And then you have Rutgers, Illinois, and Indiana. Surprising. Uh, it's early. It's still too early to know. But I think they're all fighting for that top half of the conference. Uh, that's basically teams four through ten right there. Uh, and I think it could, you know, obviously in the next couple of weeks, we'll get some uh, clarity on how these teams differentiate. Uh, but I think it could be a surprise. You know, I, I think Rutgers, Illinois, Indiana uh, are primed to stay in that second tier. I think you see a team like Michigan uh, uh, potentially fall out of it. So we'll see what happens. Kind of a broad tier, but that's where I have it right now. I think in that third tier, you put Washington standalone. I know that's kind of weird. But I think that they're, uh, you know, better than all the teams below them. And they now have two losses. So I don't think you could put them in that second tier. But I think they're a good team. I think, you know, Michigan coming to uh, Washington this weekend, I think they're going to win that game. We'll get to that in terms of the details. But uh, I think Washington is a good team. And it will prove to be a good win for Rutgers down the road. But I think they're in their standalone third tier right now. I think you put Michigan State, Maryland, Wisconsin uh, in terms of a fourth tier and then fifth tier you put ucla northwestern purdue i think ucla northwestern purdue are the three worst teams right now that fourth tier you have maryland wisconsin michigan state that third tier you have washington standalone that second tier you have rutgers loma nebraska iowa illinois indiana usc and michigan and then the top tier ohio state oregon penn state now let's get to the week six schedule Conference play really going to separate a little bit here in week six. Michigan State at Oregon. Uh, that could really bury the Spartans uh, in terms of, uh, you know, having a losing record. They're one on one, but, you know, Oregon's a daunting task for them. Uh, but big opportunity. That's a Friday night game on Fox at 9 p.m. Oregon's favored by 24 and a half. Saturday, UCLA at Penn State. Big opportunity for Penn State to start 2 0, 5 0. They are 27 and a half point favorites over UCLA, who's 0 2 to start Big Ten play. Then you have uh, that game is on Fox, by the way, at noon. 
Uh, noon, BTN, Purdue at Wisconsin. Kind of a stinker. Uh, Wisconsin, you know, opportunity for sure to get a win before coming to Piscataway at home. 2-2, two 0-1, two, Purdue 1-3, and 0-1, and really struggling this year. Uh, need better quarterback play uh, from both teams. Uh, in terms of the 330 games, kicking off with Iowa at Ohio State, that's obviously a massive game in, with Big Ten in terms of implications. Huge opportunity for Iowa on the road, 3-1, and 1-0. One, one and obviously have that disappointing loss to Iowa State. Uh, but, you know, Ohio State's big favorites here, over three touchdowns, 21 and a half at the time of this podcast. Uh, and, you know, really should uh, be the favorites. Will Howard having a great season, over 1,000 yards uh, passing, eight touchdowns, two interceptions. Caleb Johnson running back for Iowa. Uh, arguably the best back, you know, he's probably ahead of Manungai right now in terms of performance, 685 yards and nine touchdowns. Uh, and then obviously Smith, the receiver for OSU, 364 yards, five TDs, a lot of explosive playmakers in this game, but can't see Ohio state really, uh, being too challenged in this game. Uh, then you have Northwestern, Indiana. This is a huge opportunity for Indiana on the road at Northwestern, Northwestern, just two and two, oh, and one Indiana coming in at five and oh. Uh, and, uh, you know, their quarterback play has been tremendous. Rourke, uh, 1,372 yards passing, 11 TDs, two interceptions. Uh, you know, such a tremendous offense for Indiana so far. They have a chance to go 3-0 and in the Big Ten and get a second Big Ten road win. And they are favorites in this game by 13 and a half. So, again, a Northwestern, I think, is in that bottom tier. Big chance for the Hoosiers. Now, number 10, Michigan at Washington. Uh, this would be a very interesting game. I mean, listen. The Wolverines are still ranked pretty high nationally. I just don't see it long term. I know they're two and zero in the Big Ten, four and one overall, but I think they're going to get exposed here. I think Washington is better than their record. I think obviously they played really well against Rutgers at times. They made some really key mistakes at times, but I think Washington is going to end up being a good team. I'm thinking Washington this game. They are actually favored by two points, which is crazy. When's the last time you saw a top ten team? underdogs on the road against an unranked team with two losses this early in the season. I don't know, but uh, I do think Washington's going to win that game. And then you have USC number 11, three and one, one and one overall at Minnesota, big opportunity for them. They're nine and a half point favorites uh, to really jump on the Gophers and bury them at the basement of the league. And then of course you have Rutgers at Nebraska, Nebraska four and one overall one and one in big 10 play Rutgers four and oh, one and oh, huge opportunity I mean, Dylan Rayola's had a great freshman campaign so far. Over 1,200 yards passing, nine touchdowns, just two interceptions. Obviously, Manungai, almost 689 yards rushing now, six touchdowns. And then you have uh, just two offenses that, you know, are different, uh, but both able to produce big plays. I think, obviously, the Rutgers run game is going to be crucial in this game. We're going to get into the defense just in terms of they've given up some big plays. They have not been as good as advertised in terms of last year. They have not improved upon. I think, you know, there's a variety of reasons for that. Some of that is injuries and players getting over some things. Uh, I think, you know, uh, in terms of just uh, not being able to generate a lot of pressure up front. Uh, and also, I think, you know, just in terms of uh, certain coverages they've called and, you know, they haven't uh, blitzed a ton. Uh, but I think that they've kind of allowed the defense to bend but not break in a good way, because in the red zone, they're one of the best in the country. I'll get into that in my big picture uh, podcast, but they've, you know, really tightened things up when it matters most. And they forced teams to have to make, uh, you know, execute really well in that red zone. Even though they've given up some big plays, they haven't given up big touchdowns too much. And I think that that's obviously going to be a key against a big play offense with Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska favored six and a half on Sunday when the line came out. Uh, obviously, big opportunity for the Scarlet Knights. We're going to have plenty of analysis of David Anderson to break down uh, what happened against Washington more thoroughly and also look ahead at Nebraska. Uh, I'm going to have uh, some other football content this week, also some hoops in terms of recruiting. Uh, they had the interest rod scrimmage on Saturday. Had a lot of hoops coverage last week as well. You can always go back and look at all my podcasts. I, I've been cranking it out uh, this month. It feels uh, it's been fun. And uh, appreciate everyone kind of following along. But just to go back, lastly, in terms of the Big Ten tiers right now, I think you unquestioned Ohio State, Oregon, Penn State, top of the conference. You have Michigan, USC, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, Nebraska, Rutgers in that second big tier, kind of undefined at this moment. Washington right on the cusp in that third tier. Then you have Michigan State, Maryland, uh, Wisconsin uh, as that uh, third, four, excuse me, fourth tier. And then you have Minnesota, UCLA, Northwestern, Purdue in that last bottom tier, the four worst teams. Uh, and 
that's kind of how I see it. So we'll see how the week six shakes out. Obviously, a lot of Big Ten action at play, and we'll get a lot more clarity on this league. Eight conference games once again. Check it all out uh, in terms of updates uh, and uh, plenty of coverage here coming up with Rutgers football this week. Can't believe it. 4-0 Rutgers heading into October, heading into a major game at Lincoln, homecoming for Nebraska. Thanks so much for listening and watching once again here at the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. 